So, who wants to hear a secret? Okay, well, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but I have this friend named Brian. A couple of months ago, he started dating this girl named Abby. Super cute, right? Well, he went on this band trip and he cheated on her. He broke up with her without even telling her why. Can you believe something like that? I bet you think I'm a pretty big gossip, right? Well, you're not wrong. But before we go any further, we should probably redefine gossip. When I say gossip, you probably think Regina George, or two girls spreading a rumor about their friend behind her back. But according to assistant professor of psychology, Megan Robbins, gossip is just talking about people who aren't there. It can be updates on someone's personal life, like, oh, did you hear she got engaged? It can be funny stories that happened in class or a meeting. It can be anything that's about someone that's not there. Gossip doesn't have to be bad. In fact, according to Robbins, only 15% of our gossip is actually negative. Most of it is just anecdotal tidbits. So you're right, I am a big gossip. But it turns out we all are. Psychology professor Nicholas Emler conducted a study of 300 people and found that we spend 80% of our conversations gossiping. Personally, I am for 100%, but nobody's perfect. <laughs> Some psychologists place the number a little bit lower, closer to 65%. But regardless, gossip makes up a big chunk of our conversations. So we can't pretend that we really do much more than that. The key thing to remember here is that it doesn't mean you're a bad person to gossip. All it means is that you're human. In fact, the British Journal of Developmental Psychology says that gossiping is so important, we learn how to do it by age five. So think about a five-year-old you know. They're talking about you behind your back. <laughs> we all gossip, and a good amount too. But it's important to understand why we do. From an evolutionary standpoint, gossip helped us to survive. As people groups began to get larger and larger, it became harder and harder to keep track of everybody. Gossip was a convenient way to keep everyone in the loop, at least according to evolutionary psychologist Robin Dunbar. Gossip also helped certain cultures to establish norms and values, and we see this every day. When my friend group gossiped about Abby and Brian, it told everyone who listened that Brian's behavior, lying and cheating on somebody, isn't something we value. It discouraged everyone listening from acting the same way. Gossip is also an important social bonding tool. Dunbar says that gossip in humans serves the same function as grooming in other primates. I have a friend who gets really insecure sometimes when she doesn't feel included. But keeping her up to date on all the gossip, spilling tea with her, is a really easy way to make her feel valued. Gossip is also an important mechanism for us to process. If we had to keep our thoughts and feelings private all the time, we wouldn't be able to function. We should be able to vent without feeling guilty. I have a friend who was cheated on by her boyfriend, Talking about what happened with Abby and Brian and comparing it to what happened to her helped her to process and think about her own emotions in a different light. Gossip can also help us understand one another. I'll be honest, when I heard that Brian had cheated, I judged him immediately. I lost a lot of respect for him. But after talking about it with a couple of friends, they made the point that we're in high school and people make mistakes and the biggest thing is to just move on and grow from that. If I hadn't gossiped about Brian, there's a chance I wouldn't have learned to see it that way. Sometimes, gossip can be a really good thing, but that doesn't mean that it's always the best thing. Abby was really well-liked, and when people found out that Brian had cheated on her, he was ostracized. My friend group made plans to go camping, and we purposefully didn't invite him. That wasn't the kindest thing to do on our part, and looking back, I regret it. Gossip can hurt people. Sometimes it breaks trust. Sometimes we spread secrets that aren't meant to be shared. But we all gossip, and we can't pretend that we don't. The problem lies in the way that we address gossiping. When we're kids, teachers tell us not to talk about people behind their backs. A lot of people like to say that they never gossip, which just isn't true. Gossip is something that we condemn without question, and that just leads to irresponsible gossiping. 
Irresponsible gossiping encompasses a few things. It can mean spreading intentionally false rumors, gossiping with the meaning to hurt somebody, or overall accepting harsh judgment at face value. Intent is key when it comes to gossip. If you gossip with the intent to bond with your peers, vent about someone who's frustrating you, or just to have something to talk about, chances are you aren't doing anything wrong. But if you gossip with the intention to hurt somebody or to ruin their reputation, you might want to seriously reconsider doing so. That being said, intent isn't the end-all be-all. We're all familiar with the game telephone. There's a chance that what you say, intentionally hurtful or not, could be passed on and misconstrued and used to hurt somebody. That isn't to say we shouldn't gossip, but that's something that we should be aware of and try to avoid if possible. Gossip is crucial to our evolution as a species, so we can't discount it. But we should also be careful about how we do it. It's important that we analyze our own reasons for gossiping so that we can do so responsibly. Don't stop gossiping, and don't tell others not to gossip. That's like telling them not to be human. Instead, acknowledge gossip for the social tool that it is and use it wisely. Now, who wants to spill some tea? Thank you.